In this module, I want to clarify three commonly used terms and how they're interrelated. The first term is data. Since we are part of a scientific process, for us, data will be observations or symbols pertaining to observations. So for, for now, we just call that observations. Second term is information. Information is a mainstream word and also defined in, 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 in many scientific disciplines in different ways. The definition we will use is the one commonly accepted in information theory, which is information is reduction of uncertainty. Moreover, we also know from information theory that we can measure information. We can measure information in bits. And one bit of information is the same as observing a coin toss, pretty much, which is we observe um, one of two symbols that are equiprobable. We'll go into depth uh, later on in this module. The third term is the word algorithm. The word algorithm is also mainstream by now, but we will adopt a slightly technical, uh, more technical definition, which is that it is a finite description of state change. So let's explain that. First of all, what is state change? Well, let's say you have a cooking recipe. A cooking recipe you know, will basically give you instructions on how to s change the state of some raw ingredients into a completely you know, delicious dish. So in, in computer science, we are less concerned about um, the state change of you know, uh, natural things like uh, uh, pasta. <laughs> we are more concerned about the state changes of memory. So usually we use an algorithm to, uh, to solve a problem using a computer. And that means that we change the state of the memory into some state that will give us the solution to, let's say, a mathematical problem or an entertainment problem, which is like, OK, can this sprite go from left to right on the screen? You know, also, that is an algorithm. And it has to be a finite description because if it was an infinite description, we would never be able to even read it. And that means um, that we can never get to any state change. Um, but while the description is finite, the number of state changes implied can be a lot less than finite. In fact, they can be infinite. And the point here is, for example, you can go and say, calculate all prime numbers. Well, calculate all prime numbers is a very finite description, it's just four English words. And even if we added the Python code to basically make uh, this description uh, you know, more precise, it'll still be just you know, maybe a couple hundred lines of code. Point being, though, not even. It's going to be, depending on which, how you program, it's going to be a couple ten lines of code. But the execution will take infinite time because we know that there are unlimited amount of prime numbers. So let's take a look of how these three terms are connected. And for doing that, we'll choose an algorithm that's a little less complicated um, um, even than even calculating all prime numbers. We choose an algorithm that most people know and is usually executed by humans, which is when a soccer or football team plays, the question is, which team kicks the ball off? And the way to do that is to use a, a coin toss. So let's write this down a little more precise. So the first thing that happens is that the guest team of soccer or football team picks, right, and it needs to pick either head or tail of the coin. The second thing is that the referee, you know, who's supposed to be neutral, <laughs> will fairly toss the coin, and the result will be an observation of head or tail. And then we need a rule, right? We need a rule to determine um, how these two are connected. And the rule is that the guest team starts Um, is when the pick equals 
the toss. I'm using Python notation here um, to make sure this is not. Um, so basically, there's an assignment here, and then there's a, a, a binary comparison. So now, um, what can we do with this algorithm? Well, we can do a bunch of things. Um, especially, we can analyze it. So let's analyze this algorithm. We will see that if you want to describe all the state changes that are implied uh, by this finite description, um, we can simply draw a tree. So let's draw a tree. So we have a root node. And then we'll find out, well, from state 0, we can the guest team needs to pick, right? So the first thing that'll happen is that the guest team picks. It will pick head or tail. So then, from that point on, we can go to four other states. Basically, let's say the team picked head, you know, then the referee tosses that coin, and the outcome is head or tail, or head or tail given the other pick. So it's interesting because we know that, for example, here, the probability for head or tail is 0.5, this is the equi equiprobable, and the same goes for here and for here. Right. And anyway, we can now use Bayesian rules, or in this case, simple visual evaluation to figure out that number three, if it's head and head, then the team a guest team wins. If it's head and tail, the guest team loses. If it's tail and head, the guest team loses. And if it's tail and tail, the guest team wins again. So ultimately, we can say the probability of head given head and tail given tail, which makes the guest win, is 2 out of 4 states, or 0.5. This is an interesting observation, because what we find out is that in reality, we don't have to have the guest team pick. right? So the guest team, we could just go and say, all the guest teams always have head. And then the referee tosses the coin. But socially, it's way more acceptable to have the guest team pick. So these and other analysis can be made on the algorithm, um, despite the fact that we cannot do one particular thing. This is determining a winner. So this is why we call this analysis and this algorithm non-deterministic. We can do a lot of things, except we cannot do one thing, which is determine a winner. So the question, however, then becomes, how do we determine a winner? Well, we need to determine a winner. In order to determine a winner, we need to execute the algorithm. What does executing the algorithm mean? So it means we actually need to go through the states. right? Um, we could say we go from theory to practice. But in reality, what we do is the following. We go and say, OK, so there's basically information required because we have some uncertainty. So let's write this down. If information, and we have uncertainty. OK, uncertainty. So now, at the start, at the root node, how much information do we have? Right? Zero. Right? So um, that will be. Not a lot of information, but we have two bits of uncertainty, right? We know it's two bits because, first of all, the tree length here is two. Um, and then also we know head or tail is one bit and the other head or tail is another bit. So we definitely have two bits of uncertainty. So now we make the first observation. The first observation will give us one bit of information because we just defined that as one bit as a coin toss. And because we have one bit of information, it will reduce the uncertainty also by one bit. Another way to look at this is to see, well, we are basically at this stage of the tree. So we want to basically go and say, go from the, the, um, the zero, the, the, this level of the tree to the next level of the tree. We still have one bit of uncertainty left, because while we know what the team chose, head or tail, we don't know what uh, the, the, the coin toss will be. So once we have that coin toss, though, that means we go to two bits of information. That means we have the guess and we have the toss. Then we can reduce our uncertainty to zero bits. And reducing the uncertainty to zero bits is very interesting. Because what does it mean? There's no uncertainty left. 
Well, no uncertainty left means we can determine something. And in our case, is, that is, we can determine who the winner is. Um, so this is a description that we will use as an example description for, for further on modules. But for now, it makes clear how data information and algorithms are connected. Algorithms is non-deterministic description of state change. And then we need observations that pertain to these state changes to reduce the uncertainty to the point where we can determine an outcome.